Hi everyone. Thank you for coming to join me on your mat today. It's Carol. Today's practice is designed to lengthen and add flexibility to your spine. I designed it in response to a request from a viewer who asked for a practice that takes us to plow pose and snail pose. For this practice, you're going to need a couple of blocks and a blanket, so you might want to run and get that now. Let's begin standing at the top of the mat, your feet about hip width apart. Draw your energy up through the floor, up your legs, to the pelvis, turn the tailbone down. Lengthen the spine by drawing the ribs up and away from the hips. Your shoulders a couple of rolls, drawing the shoulder blades down the back. As a broad across the collarbones, chin slightly tucked for a nice long neck, and crown of the head reaches high. You can shut your eyes here and take a nice breath in. Long, slow exhale. Big inhale. Fill the body with air. And then exhaling completely. One more big breath in. And as you exhale, soften the knees quite a bit and forward fold over your legs. Find yourself long here. The crown of your head be heavy and drop towards the floor. Feel as though you're a rag doll being held on a, on a clothesline by a clothespin on the back of her pants. Let your, the weight of your upper body spill out of your hips. You can catch opposite elbows with your hands, or you can bring interlace your fingers and bring your hands to the nape of your neck. Let your elbows fall forward and down, even lengthening the neck a little bit more. If that's not comfortable, you can bring your fingertips to the mat to support you. Or you can even take a block, bring it to the mat, rest your forehead on it. <laughs> Always takes a little messing around with the props to make them work for you, but it's worth it. So whatever your choice works best for you, feels best in your body, find that and then stay with it. You can sway here a little bit, see if you can find a little more length in the spine. your fingertips to the mat if you've raised them and widen your feet to the width of your mat bring your toes off the mat heels on then slowly lower your hips down all the way now we've got heavy hips the crown of your head come higher than your heart hands can come to heart center your elbows inside your knees 
this is uncomfortable again, take your block, you can set it underneath your hips for a little bit of support, or you can even come all the way to the floor. We'll just take three breaths here. Now feeling the hips heavy, lengthening the spine that way. Now you're at the end of your three breaths. Use your hands to support you to draw your hips down onto the mat. Extend the legs long. Bring your right knee up and your right foot to the outside of the left knee. You can leave that left leg long or you can curl your left heel in towards your right hip. Up to you. Whichever you do, I want both hips back down onto the mat evenly. So your right hip wants to raise up. Um, if it's pushed up off the mat, you can extend your left leg long again. Take the left elbow, wrap it around that right knee, and begin a twist, twisting the upper body towards the right. Use the strength of your core to initiate this twist from the base of your spine. And once you've found the twist, bring your fingertips to the mat, uh, the fingertips of the right hand to the mat behind your hips. Nice and broad across the collarbones here. You can draw your chin to your right shoulder. And settle into this twist. Slowly unwind from this pose. Use your hands to help your legs back out to an extended position. You can wiggle your legs a little bit and then draw your left knee up, bring your left foot to the outside of the right knee. Again, option, leave the left, the right leg long or Curl it in underneath your left hip or next to your left hip. Settle that left hip back down onto the mat. Wrap your right elbow around the left knee. And again, begin to feel the twist starting from your pelvis, from the tailbone. And bring the movement all the way up the spine. And nice and broad across the collarbones. Neck is long, and you can draw your chin to your left shoulder. I just shut my eyes here and just settle into the twist.
Gently unwind yourself from this pose. And this time bring the soles of your feet to the mat, knees bent. Extend your fingertips up towards the ceiling and then interlace your fingers. Bring your fingers to the nape of your neck and begin to roll forward, dropping your chin to your throat and then opening up the back of the spine, rounding down, letting your elbows fall forward inside your knees. If you want a little more sensation here, you can draw your knees together, opening up the shoulders just a little bit more. You should be feeling a nice heavy sensation in the upper body, opening up the upper back, the shoulders, the neck. Take your hands away from the nape of your neck. Roll your spine back upright. Let's make our way to tabletop. Ensuring in tabletop that the knees are underneath the hips, the wrists are underneath the shoulders. We'll do a couple of cat cows here. So turn your tailbone up towards the ceiling. Drop the belly. Bring the heart forward, crown of the head high. And then exhale to an angry cat. Begin the movement with your tailbone and draw it up the spine. Rounding the spine, broadening the shoulders, dropping the crown of the head. Inhale, tailbone comes up. As we begin to stretch the front of the body, feel the movement come all the way up the spine. Exhale, curl down. Focus on the action, the motion of your spine, moving it like a wave of water. Moving at your own pace with your own breath. Inhaling to come up, exhaling to curl down. One more in each direction. And then bring the spine to neutral. And lower yourself all the way down onto the mat. We make our way into Sphinx pose now. So draw the elbows underneath the shoulders. I'm looking for um, your upper arm to be perpendicular to the floor here. So straight up and down with the upper arm. Roll the shoulders back and see if you can draw your heart forward between your upper arms. And then turn the tailbone down slightly. So you can feel a slight core engagement supporting your low spine. You should feel no discomfort in the low back here. So if you are, if this is too intense of a back bend, just widen your elbows and reduce the angle of the back bend. You'll note that with the tailbone turned down, that slight core engagement, there's no discomfort in the low back. This is a nice pose that really shows us the relationship between a strong core and a healthy low back. Now, having said that, if you want a little more sensation, you can widen your hands just slightly. Press into the palms. Come up a little higher. Turn the tailbone down 
roll the shoulders back. If you want more, walk the hands in. Turn the tailbone down, roll the shoulders back. If you start to feel some discomfort in the low back, just go back a step. You can come back to this another, to that. If you like, you can drop your chin to your chest here and just open up the muscles in the back of the neck, the upper shoulders, the upper back. Walk your hands in, bring them back out. You've lifted your elbows, bring them back down. Stack your hands one on top of the other and just lower your back down onto the mat or lower your spine long. Bringing the chest back down on the mat, resting your forehead. And letting your spine recover from this back bend in neutral. We'll take three breaths here. From here, let's make our way to child's pose. For today, let's take the variation where our knees are about hip width apart. Slide your hips back over the heels. Forehead can come to the mat or a block if it's uncomfortable to come all the way to the mat. And let your hands rest next to your ankles with the palms facing up. Shoulder blades glide away from the spine. You can be really heavy in your upper body here. your head, hands forward now, make your way back to tabletop and then to a seated position. We're going to make our way into our um, plow or snail pose now. So I'd like you to take your blanket and just lay it across the top of your mat so that when you come down on the mat, 
Um, your upper back is supported by the mat, by the blanket, but your neck is free. So I say, you know that big knob in the back of your neck? You want that to be on the mat and then your neck to, or you want that to be on your blanket and then your neck to be released from the blanket. Have one block next to your hips and the other one just off the top of your mat. And lower yourself all the way down onto the mat, blanket. If as we go through this, you may want to fold your blanket again, it's going to be up to you how much support and cushioning you want under your shoulders. Bend your knees, bring the soles of your feet onto the mat. Now I'm going to give you lots of options as we move through these next a uh, few poses, um, but what's not an option is I need you to be have your gaze, even if your eyes are closed, straight up towards the ceiling. Through these next poses, our upper back, our neck will be um, fully stretched out, and I can't have we we don't want to have be looking from side to side. So. Um, Listen to my cues and don't turn your head. So bring the soles of your feet to the mat, press into your feet and take the block that's next to your hips and slide it underneath your pelvis. This is a nice place to start and a nice place to stay. If you wanna stay here in supported bridge, go for it. You can extend your feet long. Okay, a really nice stretch across the front of the body, the hip flexors. You can Turn, get a little bit of a hip opener as well by bringing the soles of your feet together, letting the knees fall apart. Hands can rest next to your hips or overhead. It's all up to you. Staying in bridge pose is a wonderful option. If you want to move on to plow, draw your knees into your chest. And then begin to extend your feet over your face. So you can see them because you're looking straight up. And then bring your hands to your hips and give them a little push to bring your hips up. Toes can come to that block that you set there or to the floor. You wanna kick the block out of the way. Hands are at the um, low back, supporting you. Or you can rest them on the mat, palm facing down, getting a little more opening in the shoulders. You can even walk the shoulders together. So here we are in plow pose. Toes could be turned under, or you can have the tops, the toenails, pushing into the floor. If this feels good for you and you want to continue, you can make your way to snail. Just dropping your knees towards your ears. So wherever you are, that's good. Bridge pose, plow or snail. Make sure that you can still breathe deep and even. You don't want to be feeling any discomfort or pain in your neck.
Come out of this pose. Straighten your knees if you bent them. Bring your hands to your low back to support yourself as you slowly draw your spine back down onto your mat. Move very slowly here. Take your time. Bend your knees. And they soft knees. The block is there. So you can move back into bridge pose. Soles of the feet onto the mat. Press into those feet. Just look to set the block aside. And then slowly lower your spine all the way back down. You can take a few breaths here. Let your spine recover from that pose and neutral. And then when you're ready, um, we can make our way into fish pose. If you'd like to stay here in neutral, feel free to stay here in neutral. Otherwise, just roll to one side. Set your blanket aside. And take your block and bring it between the shoulder blades. So it's vertical between the shoulder blades. The block is moving in the same direction as your spine. Lay back on it. We want the block to be right under, right along the spine, beneath that big knob of your neck. The head can come, the back of your head can come to rest on the mat. If that's not comfortable for you, take it up, take your block, rest your head there as well. If that bothers your neck. Feet can be extended or come to butterfly or stay bent with the soles of your feet on the mat. It's all up to you. No choice is better than the other. Hands can be next to the hips or extended overhead. Really feel the heaviness of your body now. Let your shoulder blades wrap around the block. And just feel like your body is melting around that block. Opening up the front of the body now. We just compressed it in snail or plow. Now we want to let it open and breathe.
ready to come out of this pose. Just roll to one side. Remove the block from underneath you. And then lower your spine all the way back down onto the mat. Preparing for Savasana. Let your heels come down to the far corners of the mat. Tuck your shoulder blades underneath you as you allow your hands to rest, palms facing up on either side of your hips. For these first few breaths in Savasana, I encourage you to focus on the length of your spine, to the base of your spine, to your tailbone. And as you inhale, draw your attention all the way up through your spine to the crown of your head. And as you exhale, let your attention travel back down through every part of your spine to the tailbone. Inhale. Bringing your awareness all the way up to the top of your head. Paying attention to the journey through the spine. Exhale. Feel your attention move through your neck, down between your shoulder blades, through the mid region of your spine your low back to the tailbone. Inhale to come up. And then exhale. Lower your attention all the way back down. I'll encourage you now to let your attention go and let your mind float and be free. Nice calm mind associated with your relaxed body. Begin moving again. Begin by deepening your breath. Lengthen the inhales and the exhales, waking up the core of your body. And then draw your attention to your fingers and toes. Give them a wiggle. Turn your wrists and your ankles. Reach your arms overhead. Give yourself a good 
full body stretch. And then draw your knees into your chest. Give yourself a hug. Sway from side to side. From relax and massage the low back. And then roll over onto your left side. Nice big breath here. And when you're ready, make your way to a seated position. Whatever seated position is comfortable for you. Keeping the head, the neck, the shoulders nice and relaxed. And once you're fully seated, you can bring the crown of your head high. Inhale to bring the fingertips up. Exhale, draw your thumbs to your third eye and hinge forward. A final pose to seal in the benefits of our practice. Thank you so much for coming to join me on the mat today. I really enjoy making these practices and I love bringing yoga to uh, everyone, making it accessible for everyone. So please support me by subscribing to my channel, by liking this video or um, sharing it with your friends. Uh, any, everything you do helps me to keep making these videos. I hope you have a wonderful day. Namaste.